Hello, and welcome to today's second grade episode of Math Matters. My name is Mrs. Cook, and today we're going to practice our fluency with addition and subtraction facts to 20. Let's get started today with our same but different routine. Take a moment to look at the two pictures and think about what's the same about these images and what is different. We'll pause here to give you time to think. Let's talk about what's the same first. Both pictures have red and yellow pieces. They both have three yellow pieces. The picture on the left has a group of red cubes and the picture on the right also has a group of five red circles. The picture on the left has a total of eight pieces and inside the picture on the right, there's also a group of eight pieces. Did you think of another way they're the same? Go ahead and share it now. Now let's talk about what's different. There are more red pieces on the right than the left. In fact, you may have counted that on the right, there is an extra set of 10 pieces shown here in the full 10 frame. You may have said that these are different because the picture on the left shows cubes or blocks and the picture on the right is made out of dots or circles. If you counted the total items on each side, you probably noticed they have a different total number of pieces. On the left, there are eight, and on the right, there are 18. Both totals have the numeral eight, but the one on the right has 10 more, which we can see in the picture and in this digit here. Did you have another idea about how these are different? You can share it now. Thank you for your hard work and for communicating your thinking with us. In today's lesson, we're going to continue to build our fact fluency to 20 and use what we know about the relationship between addition and subtraction to help us solve story problems. As you follow along today, think about how you're able to make sense of story problems and use related facts to help you solve them. We will have an opportunity for you to reflect on your learning at the end of the lesson. Just like in our warm up today, you're going to want to be looking for connections you can make to ideas you already have and think about how you might be able to solve problems in new and different ways. This is what makes you a skilled communicator and creative and critical thinker. Here are the materials you may want to have on hand today as you work to communicate your thinking and solve problems in writing. You will want to have something to write with, a pencil or crayons work well, and some paper. If you think you might want to have some counters to help you with your thinking, you may want to look for something like a collection of pennies or blocks, but really anything will do. We will pause now to give you time to gather your materials. Here are some of the vocabulary words you'll hear in our lesson today and you'll want to be familiar with whole, part, monkey, and zoo. We'll play a quick game of takeoff, touchdown to help you make connections to the vocabulary words, to get you moving, and help you begin thinking about the story we'll be reading today. I will read a question that you will see posted on the screen. And if it's true for you, I want you to take off by standing up. Then for the next question, we'll touch down or sit down if it is true. Let's try it. Take off or stand up if you've ever seen a monkey, whether it's in person or on TV. Let's try the next one. Touch down or sit down if you've ever been to the zoo. And lastly, take off or stand up if you like monkeys. 
Looks like you're ready and warmed up for our number story problem. Let's get started. We're going to take a look at our story problem today in small parts. I will read the story aloud and invite you to follow along. Javier is watching some monkeys at the zoo. Most of the monkeys are climbing in the tree. What are you picturing in your mind when you hear this story? What do the words some and most mean to you? Let's add some more information to our story and read it again. Javier is watching 18 monkeys at the zoo. Most of the monkeys are climbing in the tree. Can you find what information was added to our story? What do we learn from this new information? If there are 18 monkeys, how many of them could be climbing in the tree? The story says most of the monkeys are climbing in the tree. Could it be all 18? How do you know? You are working hard to make sense of this story. We have some more new information. Let's read it again. Javier is watching 18 monkeys at the zoo. 15 of the monkeys are climbing in the tree. Can you find the new information? How does this change our story? Can you think of a question we can ask about our story? Let's read the story one last time, and I want you to listen for the question that's been added at the end. Javier is watching 18 monkeys at the zoo. 15 of the monkeys are climbing in the tree. How many of the monkeys are not climbing in the tree? Are you thinking about how you might solve this problem? Would you use addition or subtraction? Why did you pick that one? I invite you now to take some time to solve this problem. Remember, you can use any tool that may help you. You can draw a part whole chart like we used in yesterday's lesson, or even a number line. Or maybe you just want to use your counters. When you have finished solving the problem, try to write the addition or subtraction fact or the equation that shows how you solved it. We'll pause here to give you some thinking time. Let's come back together and talk about some of the ways to go about solving this problem. When we hear a story problem like this, it's helpful to begin by thinking about the information we've been given and what the question is asking or what we are trying to figure out. The whole part chart can help us organize our thinking. You probably noticed that the whole or total number of monkeys at the zoo was 18. So we'll add that to our chart at the top where it says whole. What other information were we given? That's right, remember the story told us that most, or to be exact, 15 of the monkeys were climbing trees. This is not the whole group of monkeys, it's just a part, so we can fill it in in one of the boxes labeled part. Is there any other information the story gives us? You're right, we're missing the other part, or we are trying to find out how many of the monkeys were in the other part or group that was not climbing in the trees. 
So this last part is empty. Now that you've had some time to think about the problem, let's compare your ideas or strategies to the thinking of other students. Let's start with Maria. She started with a smaller fact she knew. She thought five plus what equals eight? She knew it was three. Then she used that fact to solve the larger problem, 15 plus what equals 18? She noticed that there's another group of 10 in this problem, but she knew she still just needed to add on three more to get to 18. So 15 plus three equals 18. Now Dante thought of this problem a little differently. He thought about it as subtraction. 18 minus what will get him to the 15? He knew the whole was 18, so he put that on the number line. And he needed to find the difference between that number and the part that he knew, which was 15. So he marked that on the number line. He realized he only had to jump back or take away three to get to 15. So he knew the missing part was three. Take a moment to think about what is the same or different about how they solved the problem and what connections you can make to your own strategy. We'll pause to give you time to think. As you were thinking about these strategies and making connections to your own, were you able to find the parts and whole in each of the strategies? Use the picture here to help you describe where you see the different parts and the whole in each of these strategies as well as in your own. We'll pause here to give you time to think. Looks like you're ready for a number puzzle challenge. Here's one you can copy and try at home to give you practice with the addition and subtraction facts we've been learning. To solve the puzzle, you need to figure out the missing parts that make the facts in the rows true or equal to the total or whole in the circles. The numbers must also make the facts in the columns true or equal to the totals in those circles at the bottom. We'll pause here so you can copy this on your paper and try it later at home. In today's lesson, you practiced addition and subtraction facts to 20. Reflect on your progress towards our learning goals by selecting which emoji best describes how you are feeling about today's lesson. A smiley emoji if you've got it and are feeling good. A thinking emoji if you think you understand, but maybe you need more practice. And the confused emoji if you feel like you have more questions or could use some help with today's lesson. As you think about the learning goals for today, maybe there's something new you learned that you don't want to forget. Or maybe there's something we talked about today that you still have questions about. Take a minute to record your reflections on today's lesson and save them for the next time you're able to check in with your teacher. Mathematicians are creative and critical thinkers always looking for connections and new ways to solve problems. What new connections did you make today? Did you challenge yourself to try a new strategy? What might you want to work on for tomorrow? 
My name is Mrs. Cook, and I hope you'll join us again tomorrow for another second grade episode of Math Matters. Have a great day.